Hello everyone, welcome. And today I will show you how to make a logo or a profile pic for iFunny or really just a logo in general on GIMP 2.8. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to open up GIMP. If you don't have it, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can install it. And uh, just let that load up. Alright, so once you have GIMP open, go into File and click New and you're gonna make this 1024 by 1024 you can use whatever size you want as long as it's a square but I just like to use 1024 by 1024 click OK next thing you're gonna do is you're going to go over here and create a new layer you can go uh, layer and new layer or you can just click right here on the right side new layer and click OK and let's add some guides so that we know exactly where the center is. So go to image, guides, new guide by percent, and it will open up this window just like this and click OK. Once again, go into image, guides, new guide by percent, but this time instead of being horizontal, go into vertical, and click OK. Now we have our guides. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to click the ellipse tool and down here on these options we're gonna make sure expand from center is clicked and fixed aspect ratio is is uh, selected so now just move your cursor into the middle and drag out a circle make sure it is inside the dotted yellow and black line and now click blend click the blend tool and select a pretty light color a light gray color and for the background make sure you click a somewhat dark gray so basically just like this I'll use these for my foreground this is the HTML notation D E D A D 8 and for the background I will be using A6 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 so now go up to the top and click and press control and I just drag down and let go and you'll get something like this. So select and go to none. So next thing you're going to do is you're going to click ellipse tool again and you're going to drag a circle once again except this time make it a little smaller. So what about uh, like right there. Now this thing is important. This part is extremely important. You're going to right click inside the circle go to edit and go to cut and now this inside circle should now turn white. Go to select and go to none. Now, once again, make sure the ellipse tool is selected and make an even smaller circle this time. About there. But this time, make sure you blend. Go to the top, press control, and just drag down and let go. Select none. And so now you should have something like this. Now. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the background layer and we're going to on select this so right here you can see the eyes this toggles what you can see and what you can't so you, this toggles on and off the layer we just made right here and this toggles off the background layer toggle off the background layer so it's just this transparent image right here click on this top layer and create a new layer press OK make sure this layer 1 is below this layer right here so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click the ellipse tool and this time choose a new foreground color. Uh, it can be whatever you want, literally any color. I will be using this red, EA0000. And go into the center right here and now make another circle. But this time it doesn't really matter how big it is. Just as long as it like it covers this transparent part right here just as long as it covers this it's alright it doesn't matter if it's this big if it's this big if it's this big it could be any any size just as long as it does uh, just as long as it covers this part right here and it doesn't cover it doesn't go past the this part right here so once you have that selected right click go to edit and go to for, fill with foreground color and now you should get something like this select none alright so now we are ready to add in our text so to do this we will click 
the text tool and we will drag out a pretty lengthy rectangle and I'll be using the font Dodger right here now I'm going to type in just whatever um, let's see this is cool so the initials this is cool T-I-C now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, this text black and now let's make this an appropriate size make sure the text layer is above this layer and I'm just going to fix this right here there we go and now just make it on just whatever size you'd like I usually like to make it so it overflows onto this red part right here it just makes it look cool in my opinion you can do whatever you like and now move let's move this into place try to sense try to center it the best you can so uh, right there it looks to be good so now what you're going to do is you're going to go into the text layer right here and you're going to right click and go to alpha 2 selection then right here you're going to delete this layer now click on this layer right here right click edit and cut select none so now you should have something like this now what we're going to do is we're going to add a bevel and an emboss and to do this we need to use this extension script foo if you don't know how to do this I'll make a tutorial on how to install script foo but if you have it good so go into script foo go into layer effects and go to bevel and emboss and this window should pop up uh, we're only going to mess with three things right here on style we're going to change this into inner bevel depth we're going to change this into 15 and the shadow opacity we're going to change this to 15 and everything else leave as default and click OK when done and now you should get something like this so now what we're going to do is we're going to add in shadows so the way we're going to do this is we're going to click on this layer right here also make sure the foreground color is black it doesn't matter what the background color is just make sure the foreground color is black click on this layer and we're going to make a duplicate of this layer by clicking right here and now this layer copy will show up but click on this first layer click on lock alpha channel right click into the center of the circle edit and fill with foreground color and now you should see that this layer right here turned black unlock the alpha channel once again click on layer and then go up to filters blur gaussian blur and now this window should pop up right here where it says horizontal and vertical we're going to make this 20 right there now click ok it'll do its thing and it'll add a shadow so you can see what it does it looks pretty cool with the shadow now you can end right here it's perfectly acceptable it's, it looks nice like this it looks nice and clean but I like to add a little highlights to make it look just a little better so how we're going to do this is we're going to make a new layer click OK and now on this new layer go into blend make sure the that white is a foreground color and black is a background color and right here click on this and click FG foreground to transparent and right here where it says shape change linear to radial now just go to this bottom right hand corner click and just drag up you don't need to press control or anything just drag this up and you should get this right here go into mode right here and change normal to overlay and now you should get this nice little highlight right here so in my opinion this looks way nicer you can end right here like I said or you can continue this next highlight uh, go to the top layer, the very top layer, the layer highlight, and make a new layer. Press OK. And go into the circle, the ellipse tool, and uncheck expand from center and uncheck fixed aspect ratio. Now, drag a pretty big oval over the top right here, over the top half, and go into blend. Make sure this is the foreground color and black is a background color. Leave this the same foreground to transparent but change the shape from radial to linear 
and now drag from the top of the oval, press control, and drag all the way down to like about right here and let go. And now you should get this right here. And once again, go into mode, change it to norm from normal to overlay, and select none and now you are done so this highlight makes it look much 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 nicer this is what it looks like without any highlights and this is what it looks like with highlights so in my opinion the highlights make it look way 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 better so now you are done now all you need to do is now export it to your to whatever folder you want on your computer file export as and you can name it whatever you want make sure it's jpeg though uh, if it's png it'll make it transparent uh, if it's a GIF, well, it's going to make it a GIF, so I'm just going to name it and make sure it's JPEG and choose whatever folder you'd like. I'll just, just leave it right here and click export, click export, and now you're done. Now you can exit out of GIMP and go into your pictures, and here it is. There you go. So if you like this video, please hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and share this with anyone. And I will see you guys next time.